seen as the angry black person. Right. I'm trying to keep the peace. I'm trying to keep everything calm. I'm erasing the chick around my hair, trying to detangle it before she flat irons it. <laughs> What's up, everyone? This is your everyday consumer, Mikey G, and welcome to a Black-Owned Podcast. <laughs> and today I'm here with a great friend. I've known her since college. She's an actress. You've probably seen her on the TV show, What Would You Do? My lady, Giselle. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited. We've been winning to you this far. It's been a long time. Yes. I remember when I first told you that I wanted to start this YouTube channel. I was like, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> so tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so I do a lot of things. I'm an artist who has a lot of passions. Um, like you said, I'm an actor. Mm -hmm. um, I run a acting YouTube channel, mm -hmm. um, Giselle's Artistry. We're talking all about acting and how to get into the career. And then I also do digital marketing for creatives in small business. All right, all right, big moves. So uh, what's it like being an actress? You, it's a broad question, I know. <laughs> it is a broad question, and you know, it depends on when you ask. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're in the middle of bookings, it's amazing, it's wonderful, and then sometimes it feels like that lover that you probably should break up with, but you really <laughs> can't find the strength to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, if it's like something that you're passionate about, which it is for me, I just really love performing, it's amazing. I think it's important to, no matter what your passion is though, to be interested in doing other things too, because that mm. keeps you grounded. All right. And for you, that's your, uh, your, your websites and, yeah, and digital marketing, thing. photography, yeah. web, desi web design, social media management, all of it. That is awesome right there. So you, you can diversify into different things and whatnot. So can you illustrate how important it is for a business to have a professional looking website? Oh, yeah. I mean, the website is going to be the thing that ultimately gets your customers to open up their pocketbook, mm -hmm. right? And no matter what you say your branding is, if that's not coming across on your website, mm -hmm. it's not believable. There looks to be some disconnect. And most people are on your website for less than five seconds before they make that first decision. So you want to make sure you're capturing them. You want to make sure that the first thing that they see is something that connects to them. We like to call it like a pleasure or pain point. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember I was on this one website looking for a candle, some uh, candle warmer for my mom for her birthday. And uh, I got to tell you, I looked at the website and I'm like, oh, my gosh, oh, it looks kind of sketchy. <laughs> Websites make stuff seem sketchy. Like, like if, if it's not looking good, clean, pristine, I'm like, I don't I don't know if I'm going to get my product from them. Exactly. As a matter of fact, I, I actually went ahead and ordered uh, what was a big bad telltale sign for me was I looked at her picture for the, like the owner mm -hmm. and she's like not even looking at the camera, looking down, looks like it was just on, like taken by a cell phone. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, you gotta, you gotta look good. You gotta. You know, it's funny that you say that because one of the things that we say all the time when mm. we talk about photos for entrepreneurs is that you must be looking in the camera and you must be smiling because right. something about being able to see someone's eyes helps you to trust them more. Oh, so this is like a big study for this. It's a thing. All right. Yeah, yeah. She was looking down at her phone in the picture. I'm like, I'm sorry. that It didn't inspire any trust. And it was actually well-deserved because I, I still ordered from her. Mm. Didn't get it. Oh, I, wait, I lied. I did get it, but it was broken. It was broken. Okay. Ooh. And I got it just the same day that my mom's birthday was. She came over. We ordered some food from Magnolia's of the street, black owned. She 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 wanted it. So and um yeah, it came in, it was broken and I was like, God, it was ceramic. And I was upset. I was upset. I sent her an email, never got a reply. Really? Sent her two emails. Well, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put her lucky. name in it too in the video. I was like, Heck yeah, be lucky. I'll put them on spot. <laughs> Put them on the blacklist. <laughs> Man. Let me ask you this question. Mm. Um, was there a PayPal button on that website? I think I did see a PayPal on there. Do you think that usually if you're sketched out by a website, if they have a PayPal button, you're more likely to buy? No. No? No, because to me, PayPal like complicates it, doesn't it? Well, I think it depends on if you're someone who uses PayPal a lot. Like for me, I know that if I look at your website and I'm like, oh, this looks sketchy, mm. but they got a PayPal button. Okay, I'll get it through PayPal. If something yeah. happens, PayPal will give me my money back. Amazon's real good about that too. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So PayPal, okay. 
Well, that does help add a little bit of confidence <laughs> to it. If I know PayPal will hook me up with it. Right. What other things makes a website seem more uh, legitimate? Yeah, um, I think it's different, right? Because mm -hmm. from a regular consumer perspective, it doesn't really matter. But in terms of like conversion and making sure that people are connecting and, mm -hmm. you know, taking that next step, I think an important thing is making sure all of your offers are right at the top of your website. Mm -hmm. So figuring out what you want your website to be used for, if it's to buy a product, to read a blog post, whatever those three top things are, mm -hmm. are visual right at the top, above the fold is what we like to call it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So a lot of people, they like to use, instead of having their own dedicated website, they'll use something like Etsy or something to sell their products. How do you feel about those kind of websites? Are those the best option? Are they just as good as having your own website? What do you think? I think that if you do have an Etsy, first of all, it depends on where you are in your business, right? All if right. you're just getting started and this is the first thing that you have, yes, get that Etsy account. Make sure you're building your brand, build some awareness, sending um, traffic to Etsy at the beginning is not harmful. Mm -hmm. It's actually a place where it will, it will allow other people to find you, which can be really nice. Okay. Um, but once you have built a brand and you have like a following, you are starting to send a lot of that traffic somewhere else when you can be benefiting from that and that SEL on your own site. All right. So it depends on where you're at. If you're starting out, Etsy's cool, but as time goes on, you get more clients, you're going to want to get your own thing going. And even if you do have your own thing and you're mm -hmm. like, well, I, you know, still like Etsy because I can reach different people, make sure your offers are different. So don't have the same offers on Etsy that you have on your website. Oh, would you say your your own website should have a cheaper option or? No, I think that your website should have the things that are closer to who you serve and, and your brand. Mm -hmm. And then the things that are on Etsy should be low hanging fruit. Those things that, you know, I sell, but if I didn't make any money off of it, I'd be totally fine. Okay. All right. So on acting, right? Would you say being an actor or actress is a form of being an entrepreneur? I think so. I think people miss out, actors miss out because they don't always think of it as being an entrepreneur mm. um, and they go, oh my God, I love it. I just love it so much. And so it shouldn't have to be about my brand. It shouldn't have to be about my social media. And the reality is that's just not the world that we live in anymore. Right. Um, so the more you can look at your acting career as a business, the better you're going to do. I can see that because a lot of people think entrepreneurship is just about selling something or, or, or in a more business aspect. But as an actor, you're kind of the product. You are. You and your skill in acting and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So you get, uh, what would you say entrepreneurs and actors have in common? Um, branding is super important for both actors and entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, in the acting world, we call it types, like your actor types. Mm -hmm. How do people see you versus how you want to show up in the world? Mm -hmm. um, if I want to be a young ingenue, that's great, but they're not going to cast me as that because I don't look like that, you know? <laughs> right. um, and so I think this is, it's the same thing for brands of businesses. You have to be really clear on who it is that you serve and what your purpose is. So I think that was that would be the biggest thing in common. All right, all right. What are some of the risks you had to do, you had to make in order to commit into becoming an actress? Ooh. Some of your sacrifices. Oh, man. Well, you know, I could sit here and I can list a whole bunch of sacrifices mm -hmm. because it, it is truly a sacrifice in so many ways. Like, I've, you know, walked away from so many jobs um, just so that I can get to an audition on time or get to a booking on time. But really, I think what I've gained more than what I've sacrificed is this ability to operate in freedom. Like it does not fear me to walk away from something because I have strengthened my muscle of being able to make money appear out of thin air, right? <laughs> I've created this sense of trust in myself that I know that I can make anything happen. Yeah, that is, I do envy that about you. <laughs> me working a nine to five, I'm like, I hate the idea that I have to be somewhere just because someone tells me I have to be there. Yeah. You know, and that's the true power of entrepreneurship right there. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have that. You get to have it. You'd be like, I'm going to New York. I'm, <laughs> I'm going here. I'm going there. I'm like, I, I can't do that. I can't. I don't, and that's a strong ability to have. 
to have that kind of confidence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it's something that, because I started acting really young and mm-hmm. I graduated from college and like went on tour and then, you know, moved <laughs> to New York, there was no, oh, you should probably make better decisions. I was young. I was supposed to make mistakes. And so I used that time to strengthen those muscles. And mm-hmm. now I'm like, you know, I can do it. I can do anything. All right. All right. So it's easier to make those Make th- take those chances when you're younger, I would say. I, I do say that, mm-hmm. but I would also say that if you are on the other end and you started with security, yeah, you can't skip that other stage, mm, right? So right, right. you need to have it, whether it's on the front end or the back end. And if not, you're going to be, what is the the crisis that you have at the end of your life where you're like, ah! <laughs> Midlife, <what? laughs> no, I mean, yeah, yeah, security... I'm not going to lie. Like, the good thing about having security is that, you know, your check's going to be there. Mm -hmm. It's easier for me to make commitments such as buying a house, you know. But, I mean, it it slows you down in the world of entrepreneurship. Mm. You know, uh, instead of you just going for it. I feel like a lot of businesses that are successful are come from a guy that's like, I've moved here. I I got to, and you get to just focus on that. Yeah. You know, it's no other distractions in the way. Now, while we're saying this, before people Mm. go quit their job, (laughs) don't do that. What I would say is, you know, (laughs) those nine to fives can be really helpful while you're building the brand that you want. So once you have everything in place, you have your website, you have your branding, you have your copy, and then you've already started to gain customers. Mm -hmm. That's the moment that you want to step out. But I hear a lot of people saying, I'm going to quit my job and start this thing. Right. And if you haven't started it already, if you have no idea, um, you know, how you're going to make that money, mm-hmm. it's a lot harder and you're going to get discouraged because it's going to take about two years of you not getting anything right Yes, until yeah. you actually, you know, start making a profit. That's so true. That's so true. You got to you got to have things in order ready to go to take off. Mm-hmm. Have you ever taken on a role that you didn't like? <sighs> <laughs> and uh, why <laughs> yes for the cash mm. very simple mm-hmm. so like that's the other thing about being you know a creative um sometimes you are going to take creative jobs mm-hmm. that are just jobs that are going to pay the bills um and then i think in acting in particular i'm one of those actors that started off legit which is like television film and then very quickly my representation um i I added another agent onto my rep Mm -hmm. package so i had like an agent and a manager and my new agent decided to try me in commercials and i started booking commercials a lot and then my manager was like yes commercials and then literally all i've you know was being booked on and auditioning for at that time were auditions for commercials, which I love because they pay the bills and it's wonderful. Um, But at some point, somebody who's, you know, theater trained, trained, uh, trained, I have my um, BFA in theater performance. It's like, oh, this is cute, but you're literally paying me to smile and point at things (laughs) or like saying these really simple lines. No, what I went to school for. (laughs) This is not what I went to school for. So, yeah. Can I just like, you probably sit there and be like, can I cry a little bit? Can I have a single tear? <laughs> I'm just so happy to use this product. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. That's wild, though. That's pretty cool. So how, how many commercials have you been in? Oh, I don't know. You don't know how many? I don't know how many. Um, I can tell you some of the brands that I've had commercials with. Mm-hmm. Target, um, Olay, mm-hmm. um, Uber, that was a print ad. Um, I have a Seagram's commercial running right now. Okay. Um, I'm blanking, but there's a lot. There's a lot of little cute brands that I've gotten a chance to work with. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, what about films? What films have you been in? Films, yeah. So I want to do more films. Yeah. Um, I've been in a couple of independent films, and mm-hmm. then I was able to lead a film that you can find on Amazon and Perflix and a couple of other places. I think you could buy it on YouTube too, and it's called God's Compass, mm-hmm. and it's a Christian film. And I give mm-hmm. birth in the first fifteen minutes. Oh, you know, wow. you should just watch it just for that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was a life changing experience for me. Yeah. Absolutely. Did it make you want to have kids or no? No. no. <laughs> I was like, I feel like I've done it. This is great. Oh, that's crazy. It's weird when I'm like, I went, last time I saw you on TV, it was, what would you do? Mm -hmm. I went to hang out with the family for like 
at my mom's place. I turn and I see you on there like, I can't believe I know this person. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a show, I can't believe I didn't mention that. That's a show that I love because mm-hmm. out of all of the things that I do, there's immediate response there. So we're mm-hmm. doing the scene that we want people to respond to because something is wrong here. Will you stand up for it? And I, it just restores my faith in humanity every time I'm on that set. So you say, would you say more people intervene in those situations? Yeah, if you haven't seen, what would you do? They have these scenarios out in the street, just random people. It's kind of like, it's a reality show, right? Yeah, Yeah, it's a reality show. They'll play out a scenario and uh, just to see what the bystanders would do. If they get in the way, hey, hey, that's that's wrong, stop it. Mm -hmm. You know, or or they'll just let it happen. So which which one happens more often? Do more people just walk by and don't say anything or most people step in? It depends on the situation. Um, Anytime there's kids involved, people are going to step up. Mm -hmm. And there's been times where I've been in danger. Mm -hmm. They always have a bodyguard on set with us. And I'm like looking at him, make sure he's looking at me because this is starting to get scary. Oh, goodness. Um, But like the ones that people don't talk up that much with would be like... um, Things where it's just in between two women. Mm. Um, if it's a woman and a guy, in, anytime there's a power dynamic, people are more likely to intervene. But if there's no power dynamic, like there was this one scene where we were in the gym um, and I was body shaming someone with another girl. Um, and I thought more people would stand up for her, but they did not, especially the one where we were body shaming someone who was a full size woman. Mm. And um, yeah, people people really didn't step up as much as I thought they would. That's crazy. Yeah. It depends. It depends. Yeah. I've seen something on a different show where it's pretty much the same premise. Um, they had it where a guy was like in a, in a woman's face looking like they're about to get physical. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, people step, hey, hey. Back up, man. You don't know, <laughs> you know. But then they've just reversed it. Same two actors mm-hmm. had the woman. She was slapping the guy and everything, and people just walking by. Some mm-hmm. people even laughed. I was like, "Hot dang!" But you're right. Power. People see it differently. You know. Yeah. Have you have you ever had a director and anyone come up to you and be like, "Could you act a bit more hood or a bit a bit more urban?" As they like to say. He's, urban oh my god yes i have um more so in an audition than on set okay um i'm trying to think of the exact moment okay i have two one was a voiceover Mm -hmm. i can't say the name of the character but um it was these really ghetto food items Mm -hmm. it was like um it wasn't a burger but let's say they were burgers and um they were all voiced really the direction was let's make them like love and hip hop style, you know, uh, and it was ridiculous. And yeah. I was so offended by it. But honestly, it was at the beginning of the pandemic. And I was like, I haven't done any acting in a while. Um, OK, I guess I'm guess I'm going to do it. You got to make that choice. And I did it. Yeah. And I didn't feel good about it. That's something that I probably should have said no to. Do you feel like the black stereotype that we have here in America that that's kind of us implementing it like are we are we copying art or is art copying the people i think it's a little bit of both right i think that's why it's hard as an actor because you are such a small part of this big machine Mm -hmm. that you don't have much control unless you're like a super big name and so it's like you're either going to take the job or you're not going to take the job and somebody else is going to get the job Mm -hmm. so in that space you don't feel like you have much to argue for but there are some opportunities where and i feel like you can make these opportunities where you can have a conversation about why are we making these choices Mm. and let me as the actor make it a deeper choice that has some context right. like if you have me robbing this liquor store and I'm yelling and arguing with this person or whatever it is how can I make that real for me so that it's not this surface level black chick black angry woman or whatever it is that I'm asking to portray right right all right, all right. yeah um as you know you going down to Atlanta and uh they don't deserve you by the way <laughs> And, you know, Tyler Perry opened up his own studio down mm-hmm. there, you know? But we all know, watching all the Medea movies, Tyler Perry has, like, built his whole empire pretty much off of the black stereotype, every Medea Ooh. movie, all that stuff. You just gonna do it, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm jump into it. We're gonna talk about this. <laughs> We're gonna get in it. But is he's able to make it. He has his own studio now. Mm-hmm. He took the money. Ma- making something work, whether he owns it, he runs it. Mm-hmm. 
Was it worth it, though, to reinforce the stereotype against blacks as, you know, loud, whatever, obnoxious or dangerous, whatever, in order to actually get to a point where he could have his own studio and do whatever he wants? I mean, I guess he would say it was worth it for sure, right? You know, that's his legacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I wouldn't ask the question if it's worth it. I would ask the question, what now? Mm, right? So yeah. if that is what has gotten you here, how can you now make different choices? That's true. Now create content that people can be proud of. Because not only was he, you know, perpetuating and creating stereotypes, mm -hmm. he was also showing people in the industry how we how we are mm -hmm. and that was kind of the um the center of our existence and the characters that are created for us and about us i would say you can't be upset if someone exposes how we are what we are what our problems are i find that a lot of times we get more upset about people exposing what the problem is than actually being upset with the fact that that's even a problem among us but you can't put that on art no, I wouldn't put that on art. I wouldn't put that on art. But um, I, I agree with you as far as uh, as far as what he does now, yeah. right? If he continues to do more Medea movies or he come out with Tradia or Laquisha or some stuff, I'd be upset. But if I see him do something different, like if I see, I would love to see an all black cast sci fi movie. That would be cool. Right? He's not doing that, though. No, no. The budget's too high. Um, one thing that I thought about when you were saying that, oh, did I lose it? I keep losing. <laughs> it's it's right. my ADHD. It's going. It's going to cut this out. Oh, okay. All right. So with Tyler Perry, I was always... I loved him when he was doing the stage plays, you know, mm -hmm. and I would go and see it. Right. You know, I would buy the bootleg stage <laughs> stage play recording. Um, right. But then when he went mainstream, something about it just felt weird. It felt like um, originally we were laughing together. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it was like this whole world is watching this. And now it feels irresponsible. Right. Now it's not just for the black community. Now all eyes are on it. Exactly. And um, I think whereas his space changed, um, I don't know how much of how he approached the work changed. Now also, like, who am I to say anything? <laughs> but, you know, that's how I feel about it. Well, he, he's definitely changed it, though. It's not like... He stuck with Medea. He, he expanded. He did, took different roles, did different things. Yeah, Daddy's Girl. Super Daddy's cute Girl, movie. Great movie. Um, what else? And you see him in other... In other I, Why I was I surprised when I saw him in Star Trek. Oh, I remember that. He, yeah. He was, he was a short role. It was a little cameo type thing. But yeah. You know, I was like, oh, snap. What is he doing here? Yeah. Let me find out he's a Trekkie. You can tell that he cares. Yeah, he um, does. And he's trying to make a difference. But he also says a lot, I'm doing this for us. I don't care what they're doing. I don't mm -hmm. care what they think. Um, and that's very clear. So uh, what do you love the most about acting? What I love the most about acting is getting utterly and completely lost in a character um, to the point where I have to ground myself at the end of a scene to come back. Yeah. yeah. Are you one of those actors that gets deep into the, the character role? You like Johnny Depp and all them? Like, I'm not method. No. I do like so. a couple of elements of the method. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, and my... my teacher in college used to say that, you know, I was masturbatory uh, with my acting, and it's totally true. And now when I'm teaching acting to young kids, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm seeing it. <laughs> um, What's but, masturbatory? What's that? Um, so, like, if I was doing a scene where I was crying, mm -hmm. um, I would be more interested in crying because I wanted to feel like I was crying and emotional versus let me communicate this story so everyone can experience it with me. A movie. I got an idea for a play. No yeah. play. I want to do a movie. Yeah, I got a small script. I think I told you before. Yeah. The one about uh, slaves taking over the plantation. And actually yes. running it in order to stay hidden. Yes. <laughs> that would be great. I mean, look, I'm not here to watch any more slave movies, but mm. if that was one, I'd watch it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. It's, I don't like them slave movies. I don't like things that have the connotation that we are victims. Mm -hmm. You know? And if we're going to do a slave movie, 
we don't need to see the slaves. Let's show the mm. other side of it. Let's look at all of the terrible, horrible things that were being discussed, that were being planned, you know, to keep those people in those spaces. We know, we know what the slaves were going through. We don't need to see it anymore. Personally, that's how I feel. All right. Yeah. yeah. Who's your favorite act? Ooh, who's my favorite actor? Mm -hmm. um, I think it always changes. I think right now I really enjoy... Hmm. I mean, okay, if I had to say my favorite actor, I would say Cecily Tyson. Like, come on. I have to see your face. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. I have to see your face. Shame. Absolute shame. Um, icon. I got to see her perform on Broadway in her 90s. I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, but, like, every day, I really enjoy watching what Taraji P. Henson has done with her career, mm -hmm. especially in these last few years. Yes. And remembering her from forever and how long her career has been and how late she started her career. And I just think she's super inspirational. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of actors that's, that they were actually in the game for so long. Mm -hmm. And you did, you don't know about them until they were, like, I didn't know that Lawrence Fishburne was acting when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. I had no idea until I saw a movie called Corn, um, Cornbread. Mm. Cornbread. He was in that movie. He was like 11, 12 years old. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's actually Lawrence. What? That's, that's the, Morpheus? That's the great thing about watching like old 90s films because yeah. you're like, oh my, oh my God, look at all these people. <laughs> you know? Because you got to yeah. start somewhere. Yeah. I'll, I'll be wondering, Morgan Freeman, like, where was he at? What was he doing before he blew up? He had to be in his late 30s or something when, we, when uh, he blew up, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of crazy. It's, it's tough. It's um, you never know when you're gonna get to that point where you can actually live off of off of that trade. Well, I think it's also like, what are you doing it for? Because if you're doing it for something that's monetary and that's like the first thing that you're trying to grasp at, mm -hmm. you're not gonna sustain. Right. Um, but if you're doing it for the love of it, you know that there's always something new that's going to come, that's going to be interesting, that's going to feed you emotionally. Mm -hmm. And that's also why a lot of people do like commercials and stuff like that, because those are the things that are going to pay the bills in between those bigger projects coming up. Oh, um, yeah. Voiceover yeah. work, stuff like that. Okay. And there's so many ways to make money as an actor that people just don't know about. That's so true. That is true. You know, I don't, me, I think about it acting strictly TV shows and film, mm -hmm. but there's other ways to go. There's stage plays, mm -hmm. things like that up in New York. What what other ways can people? I mean, when I used to try to make my rent <laughs> in a month, I'd be like, oh, I haven't had anything. You know, extra work is really easy to make some money off of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, voiceover stuff, like websites like Fiverr.com and these different sites. You can just put your stuff up there and people reach out to you and you create things for them. You can create little five minute commercials for small businesses and get paid. Um, there are, there are a lot of things. All right. There are a lot of things. So what advice do you have for young black actors and actresses out there? Ooh, I would say figure out why you love it hmm. and get really clear on that and make sure it's not attached to anything that you cannot control. Hmm. Um, so let's say you love what it feels like to feel the applause at the end of a scene, or you love what it feels like to get lost in the middle of a scene. Whatever that thing is, get really clear on it. And then you should also make sure that you have goals that match the amount of time that you have to put into this industry. Uh, be, realist, be, re be realistic. If you only have five or six extra hours a week, make sure the goals that you are setting make sense with the amount of time that you have to invest in it. All right. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Have have you ever felt treated differently as being a black female actor? Yes. Yes? Yes. I was telling you, do you know of any, uh, you got any stories or anything? Oh, my gosh. Let me, uh, bring me into your, <laughs> your world. Let me know. Um, the thing that you're going to hear the most common with actors of color is like the hair situation on set. Mm. It is enough to make you not want to go to set, to be completely honest with you. Um, I did a film where um, I had so much damage done to my hair while I was there. Um, I had to cut inches off of my hair. Um, so the stylist tried to flat iron my hair without detangling it. And because I'm so interested in being this agreeable black person, I don't want to be seen as the angry black person. Right. I'm trying to keep the peace. I'm trying to keep everything calm. I'm erasing the chick around my hair, trying to detangle it before she flat irons it. Um, 
just situations like that. I also had another person, it was on a set for a major beauty brand and um, they needed my hair in a back ponytail. And instead of, you know, just brushing it back into a ponytail, he parted my hair in about eight different sections and layered it with gel to get it back into one ponytail. I had so much gel in my hair. And again, you're on set and you know, a lot of actors would argue this. They would say, you should stand up and you should say something. Mm -hmm. The amount of energy that I have on set is limited to doing what I need to do in front of the camera. Right. I can only say, but so much. When he started to do that, I said, you know what? I could really slick it back for you without all of that gel. Do you want me to put my hair in a ponytail? No, it's okay. All right. <laughs> Man, and stuff like that, it, it makes me think that more than ever, like, you, it's tough for you to be able to just say, no, I'm not doing this. Because in the in the industry film, in the film industry, it's not like you, you can depend on a black studio to go to to work with. Yeah. You know? But I think it, now we have so many opportunities to work with independent artists, right? Mm -hmm. Independent cinematographers or screen playwriters who want to produce content on their own. Now, are you going to have the hair and makeup? Are you going to have the, you know, mm -hmm. all those other things? You probably won't, but the connection to the work is going to be so much stronger. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. All right. Do you see a difference in them as far as negotiating or like getting a figuring out what you're going to get paid for it and whatnot? Honestly, I really don't handle much of that. All oh. of that goes through my reps. Mm -hmm. um, and I do sometimes feel like I should be saying things, but, I, you know, I'm not at the space where that's as important to me. I got you know, you. I trust them to make decisions that are good for me, and they want their money, too, so they do that as well. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, it made me think about um, when uh, Monique came out about the whole, how she wasn't getting paid by Netflix. They didn't offer as much as they offered the other people. Yeah. And that's a thing. It is. That's it a is. thing. But it's like, I see and I don't, I'm not the type that I like to just jump to, oh, it's, it's automatically because you're black or it's automatically because you're, you're gender or whatnot. It's, um, but a lot of the time it is. A lot of time, I would say it is. I, on that one, like she said, they didn't offer, they said I'm a legend, like Dave, Dave Chappelle's a legend. But at the same time, like, all right, they said you just don't bring in as much people as him, and I'm like, and I agree with that somewhat because come on, it's Dave Chappelle, like mm -hmm. he's well known among not just black people but whites, even across you know, in Japan they're saying oh, Rick James bitch, you know. <laughs> so with M Monique, it's like she was known well within the black community. Yeah, so I think you know when you start to talk about things like that, you're also talking about like sexism in the comedy space, mm. which is a real thing. And I'm not a comic, so I can't really speak to it, but it's obvious that it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say, well, instead of comparing her to him, why don't we compare her to someone else who is a woman right. who okay. is a white woman? So Amy right. Schumer, and she obviously made a lot more. Now, they're in two do totally different parts of their career. Mm -hmm. um, Monica's moment that Amy's having was years ago, mm. right? But still. No, I, I get that. I, I can understand that. My only thing I would say about that one is that, it, let's just be real, black people don't care about Amy Schumer like that. At all. You know? But white people love her, apparently. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more white people in America who would watch her than, mm. than black people that are watching uh, Monique. Well, our, our coin moves further mm -hmm. than white people's money, right? And I think that's something that we just don't get a chance to prove. Mm -hmm. Like when you think about Wakanda, that was like the big proof of, look, if you make something, not only will black people love it, but everyone will love it. And yeah. it's not a black film. It's, you know, no. something for everyone. Yeah, Black Panther was, um, they made... It was great. I ain't gonna lie. I love the movie. I watched it, but it's true. Whereas um, Disney got paid off that. Oh yeah. And, you know, a bunch of black actors and actresses got paid. That's awesome. Yeah. But the 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 profits went to Disney. Yeah. So I feel like yeah, we need to be coming up with our own stuff. I would love to see a a black owned comic book film movie, that and, would be and dope. we just straight up supported that. Yeah, I think it's how do we get that brand in front of everybody uh it's gonna start small yeah it's gonna be small it's gonna struggle 
you know. Yeah. But as long as all of us get behind it, we can. I don't think. I don't think. We, like you said, our spending dollar goes a long way. It does. We spend the most money. You know, which we need to talk about as well. Exactly. Support <laughs> black businesses. <laughs> Help people out, you know, support black. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's these cute little TikToks about small business owners. And they're mm -hmm. like, when a corporation gets a sale, they're like, mm, great. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. When a small business gets a sale. Woo. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is so amazing. And like, we have to start putting our money where it matters. Yes. If you're going to be buying these things all the time, you have to buy toilet paper. You have to buy, you know, essentials. Yeah. Why not spend the extra amount of time? and actually get it from someone who, you mm -hmm. know, who's, you can make a difference in their lives and the right. lives of their families. Yeah, a lot of black businesses, they're not going to have all the perks that bigger businesses have. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. They might not be able to do overnight shipping. Mm -hmm. and they might not be able to sell as cheap as the others because mm -hmm. they're able to get deals with other people that smaller business can't, just can't get. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we support them, maybe they'll get big enough where they can get some of those hookups. Yeah. You know, I would love to see us um, get to a point where, especially in the film industry, where we have our own black Hollywood. For a while, it was ATL. For a while? For a while. Atlanta, I haven't seen any good films come out of Atlanta oh, in a while. Boy, bye. Come on. Last one I saw, what was it? Like Kevin Hart and, and Ice Cube. <laughs> we used to be pumping out movies all the time from there. Well, you, you wait till... COVID's gone and we got some more, you know, eh, time yeah. and energy. Okay. Yeah. I'm moving from New York mm -hmm. to Atlanta. Um, and a lot of it was, oh my goodness, I'm just so excited to be in a city that I can still do what I love mm -hmm. and have a car and have space and not have neighbors that are right <laughs> next to me, right? Um, and then the other part of that is I'm just so tired of the big, huge charade mm. of the acting industry. And let's talk again after, you know, a year in Atlanta or whatever, but... Um, <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to work with people who are just starting in the industry, mm -hmm. these independent artists. And that sounds exciting to me. Mm -hmm. Like the most fun, the most family, the most, um, the deepest I've ever gotten into a role, mm -hmm. second deepest, have all been with independent projects. Okay. Yeah. Specifically theater. But I'm hoping <laughs> to find the same thing with, you know, independent films too. When do you think... Black film was at its strongest. Ooh, I mean, I don't know if this is my answer because I'm like, I was a kid in the 90s, but I mm -hmm. felt like, and what my parents showed me, but I felt like I watched nothing but black everything when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, that could have been because they were handpicking what they were showing me, right. but there were so many movies, so many TV shows, you know? Right, right. Um, I, th I would say it had to be the early 90s. Mm. In the 90s, definitely. Eddie Murphy was killing it. Oh, my gosh. All the different... I don't even know who was the producer or who really got the, the profits from those. But, I mean, movies like Eddie Murphy did Vampire in Brooklyn. Oh, that was so good. Right? Uh, so good. Harlem Nights. That was uh, pretty much all black cast. Mm -hmm. Everything. It, those were awesome movies. And they were classic. And they classic. were well done. Original. And they showed people in, like, really good lights. Exactly. Yeah. And... and I would love to see us get back to that more yeah. type of thing instead of just the same old, same old, you know. Uh, oh, would you say colorism is involved? It gets, it's big into the film? Yeah, for sure. They always got the, what is the, like the black women get portrayed as, the darker skinned women get portrayed as, you know, more independent, more sassy, and then the, the lighter tone ones end up being considered more uh, submissive, I would say. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, every time I hear about that, I think back to the breakdown for the Ice Cube film, which I actually saw live on my phone. Like, what? You guys are doing this? And when someone screenshotted it and shared it with the world, I was so grateful. Mm. But they literally had the women categorized by skin tone. Light skin means this. Medium means this. Dark skin means that. And it was disgusting, yeah. truly. Yeah, I would love to see that change up quite a bit. Yeah. Just have people play roles. Tell everyone where they can find you and uh, all your stuff. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm going to split this into two. If you're an actor, you can find me on YouTube under Giselle's Artistry. If you're a small business, you can find me at giselle'sartistry.com. And we do all things photography, web design, and social media marketing. 
All right. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, I guess that's it. We're going to go ahead and cancel it out. Uh, bow challenge for this one. Go out and eat at a black-owned restaurant. Hey, hey. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Is that, thank you for coming. Ooh. Oh, what? Could I make a bow challenge? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and give him something. Mine's, okay. Mine's kind of low. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give you a bow challenge. I'm going to ask you to share five small businesses of people that you know mm -hmm. and share it on social media, talk about them, because that's one of the things that people, people are always like, I don't know how I can support these small businesses. Something as simple as sharing people's stuff mm -hmm. and talking about it makes a difference. Don't just press share and add it to your story. Talk about it, create a story, create some context. All right, yeah, yeah. Oh, be on the lookout. She's gonna, she came through, she helped me out. She does a review of a lingerie from Love Vera. So. <laughs> I'm going to have that out. It probably might be two months or so. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> it was a good time. So, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, tune in next time.